almost exclusively we would be involved with agency like BLM and Forest Service and grazing permittee kinds of issues. I wouldn't necessarily call them conflicts, but sometimes the discussion got pretty heated. And so the point of the story is to try to find some kind of a solution that would make everybody come out of this more or less whole. A big part of that program had to do with monitoring of rangeland resources. So what we've tried to do for many years is to get rangeland grazing permittees engaged in the actual monitoring of their resource on the grazing permits so that they would be able to understand what the vegetation composition and characteristics were that the agency people wanted them to accomplish. And usually when you've got people engaged that way, they started paying more attention to the um, utilization by their livestock. They usually started doing a better job of moving livestock around. And it, riparian zones were a big part of that issue all through that period of time. You worked with both landowners and the agency people. There were other extension people that worked maybe more so with private landowners exclusive of the BLM or Forest Service over that period of time. But for the most part, extension work had to do with federal agency and grazing permittees. My replacement, of course, is here already. And so he and I have visited quite a bit about, you know, sort of the politics of the state, as it were, and the kind of approaches that I use to stay out of trouble with various and sundry people. So for instance, you know, you don't want to cozy up to western watersheds or you'll be in real trouble with the rest of the neighborhood. And um, by the same token, you don't want to just make yourself into a shill for the livestock industry either. So the beauty of balancing that is that you have the agency people on the one hand and ranchers on the other who are more or less equally willing to listen to what you got to say. The interesting thing about extension was that you didn't go there unless somebody wanted to see you in the first place. It's not like a room full of students, some of which were really interested in what's going on, but some of them are just there because it's another course that they have to take. I didn't try to tell people necessarily how to do their business, but you made suggestions about what might work and then you could explain the ecology of the system to them. That was probably one of the bigger things, is to make sure under, people understood how the system worked. You know, you can't turn a sow's ear into a silk purse. It's an old saying, of course, but the point to that story is that if you've got a saline upland ecological site and it has gardener saltbush on it, you can't change that. That's probably about as good as you're gonna get. Mm -hmm.